Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and I really, really like arcade buttons. And I've always wanted to make a really awesome permanent project with a bunch of arcade buttons, preferably something musical. That's actually how I got into open source. I wanted to make kind of like music production projects. It's, it's kind of spiraled out of control from there, but I've, I've realized multiple dreams with this project that is about to go into its final stages where it will live out its happy little life. And that is a MIDI controller using multiple arcade buttons. Specifically meant to kind of emulate, you may have seen um, DJ Tech Tools makes the MIDI fighter, um, kind of like a take on Street Fighter. It's, all these arcade buttons and so that's what I've done here and how it will be laid out at the end. These arcade buttons are from Adafruit. They're the mini arcade buttons. They're a little smaller, a little cuter than your average arcade button, but what's extra, extra special about these is it really brings in my other, other electronic love and that is LEDs. This one came unplugged. Now, as you can see, this wiring is a bit precarious, so I only have these two with the LEDs hooked up, but as you can see, there are plugs on all of these to make the LEDs light up. I actually did a quick live stream a little while ago. You can find it on the channel where you'll see all of the LEDs working. Um, it's just that, you know, to be honest, the MIDI functionality is just a little, a little bit more important. And that's what this is doing. Um, and I'm emulating one of my favorite uh, MIDI instruments, the Kong drum designer in Reason. And it's a four button by four button drum pad basically. And that's what this is gonna emulate. And I have mapped them all to match the notes that uh, the Kong matches up to. If you see here, I got my MIDI keyboard. C2 goes there and so that's how I've mapped these buttons. And you're probably like, well, how'd you do that, man? I don't see a MIDI input on here. What'd you do? Let's talk about that. So I could have done a few different things to get the MIDI data to be flowing in this. And I, I went with a Spark Fun Pro micro board, five volt, 16 megahertz. And I, I chose that for a couple of reasons. One, it has the 32U4 chip and for those of you that don't know, that means you can do HID interface, you can do MIDI over USB. The reason why I chose it as well, besides that, is it has five volt power. A lot of these little boards that also have the 32U4 chip only have 3.3 volt. These LEDs require five volt power. So in order to have the proper power and to be able to do the MIDI, this was really the main board that stuck out to me. To get all the buttons connected to the board, I at first was using a 4051 multiplexer, which I've used previously. But I had a really hard time with the way that I was trying to map the code and everything, and where each of these had to be connected to a specific note. I was having a really hard time getting it to work properly. So finally, as I was sitting, watching Orange is New Black over the weekend, all of a sudden it hit me. How many digital inputs are on the Spark Fun Pro Micro? Well, there's like 21 <laughs> and I'm using 16 buttons. So I just went directly onto the pins of the board and just got rid of the whole multiplexer idea. I had just a really hard time with it and it was holding up the project. So I just went directly in and in the end, when I do my final like proto board mounting, it's gonna make everything a lot cleaner as well. I'm not gonna have to worry about hooking up these little ICs that have been abandoned here all by themselves at the end of the spreadboard. So, Let's take a look at the code. When I saw these buttons, I basically was like, okay, this is the time to do this project. And then just kind of researching around after I'd ordered the buttons, because you know, that's the order in which you should plan a project. Um, I found out that there is now a MIDI USB library for the Arduino, if you have an Arduino with a 32U4 chip, which is magical. So here we declare the MIDI USB library, pitch to note library, uh, number of buttons, 16. And then here you see we're addressing each individual button and which individual pin they're connected to. Now, one thing I wanna point out, 
originally in the example code, they were all um, in the example code that's provided, which I'll link down below in the description. Um, you'll see that they were all um, eight bit integers. Um, and I had this really hard time where once I got all my buttons hooked up and I finally got the code working so that each button was triggering a note, I, I couldn't get all 16 to work. And I slowly was like commenting out buttons to make sure there was a problem. And I noticed that there was this issue with, it was after I had nine buttons hooked up that anything past the ninth button wouldn't work. And finally I realized I needed to make them 16 bit integers because I had more than eight inputs. And I knew this from work I'd done with NeoPixels. So I made every single thing that says integer 16, those used to be integer eight. So I changed them all to 16 and it worked. And you had to change all of them to 16 bit, otherwise it wouldn't work. So once I figured that out, that was really great. Then we can move on to buttons. We see we're making an array of 16 and we see that we're taking each of these buttons, declaring that they're part of the array of 16. And then note pitches, again, an array of 16. And we declare the pitch, pitch C2, pitch D. And then once again, notes time, num buttons, press buttons, just that's kind of for some timing situations here. And so then the setup, we once again, we make a little array, we show num buttons, 16, and we set them all to inputs. And then you see we're just doing a loop by using void uh, declarations, read buttons, and play notes. Fantastic. Uh, so here we have some MIDI data here. If you know about MIDI, uh, this will make a little bit of sense because you in MIDI there's kind of three parameters, the channel, the control, and the value. Um, and actually the three pins on a MIDI input, that's what they're reading. All right, so then we have the read buttons, which is in the loop. And so we see int i equals zero, i less than num buttons, which we know is 16. So we're making an array of 16 again. If we are reading any of the buttons in the array as low, we're gonna bit write press buttons i one. We're gonna say that the signal was received um, with a delay of two seconds. I had to really mess around with the delay two milliseconds, I should say, to really mess around with the delay to get the timings properly, right? But you can hear, it's like a nice distance now, else bit right, press buttons, zero. Now, one thing I want you to notice, I'm holding down the button, nothing's coming out. When I release, there's a note. So that's how that's working. So like if I were to have these hook up to another synth that's more melodic, it's not gonna work as well. But for my purposes here, it works perfectly. So then we have play notes again, i equals zero, i less than 16, i plus plus, so an array of 16. If we are reading the press buttons, which is back up here of 16, is not the same as the previous button, uh, then again, we're going to look at the button, bit right, previous button, and this is how the note pitches get in. Uh, note on, zero, note pitches I, again, 16, 100. And then we midi flush. So this is how the note is being sent. Um, and then again, we're looking to see which note should be pressed. And midi flush is kind of a, a weird bit of uh, code that uh, basically clears out everything you just did. Otherwise, you can get a lot of crashing in MIDI where like everything's crashed together, it just sounds horrendous. So that's what that commands for. And then again, we have some uh, more MIDI things here, note on and note off, and you can see the three bytes, channel, pitch, velocity, and these um, hexadecimal values that are lining up with that. And yeah, that's it. The MIDI USB library is amazing. I can't compliment it enough. Like how great. This is mainly the example code. I just altered it a little bit. The biggest alteration I did was to make everything 16 bit to allow for the 16 buttons. And if you aren't using all those individual inputs and outputs, let's say you are using a MUX, you won't even have to do that. However, if you're using a MUX, you'll have other code problems besides 16 versus 8 bits. So I wish you luck with that if that's something you decide to encounter. But what's next for this project? Obviously, this is untenable. 
I'm, I can't, it's really, it's more of a demo almost right now. It's not very useful to anyone like this, so what am I gonna do? Well, first, I'm gonna mount all of these uh, receivers for the buttons and the spark from Pro Micro onto some proto board. And I even got these lovely, I don't know the exact name, but they're basically standoffs for little boards. And um, <laughs> I'll link these down below because trying to figure out like the right size for these is really hard. <laughs> but these are also from DigiKey and they fit the SparkFun Pro Micro. So it's similar to um, when you have the little um, standoffs for ICs, similar to what is on like this guitar pedal. Like I can take this IC out and there's like a little kind of repository for it to go in. It's similar to that, but for the SparkFun Pro Micro. So that'll get soldered onto a board um, with the resistors and everything, obviously. And then uh, I'm gonna do a pretty cool housing, I think. So we have two pieces of lovely wood. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill holes, uh, 16 holes in total. Um, and then I'm gonna use some, just some standoffs so that you can, see, you'll be able to see all the wires and everything in between. And um, that's how it will exist. Uh, and I think it's gonna be really cool. I think it's gonna be really awesome. Um, and uh, I actually got a hole saw that's the right size for the buttons. And um, so that'll be the next part um, and a part two uh, to this project uh, in another video. But. I, um, I will be posting the code on my GitHub, so don't worry about that. Um, so if you wanna make your own, you can and alter it all you want and everything. But that's all for this episode of Let's Say DIY. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below, especially about this project. Like, are you working on MIDI controllers? Are you into arcade buttons? Are you into LEDs? Find me on social media, links are down in the description. I actually posted this project a lot in its various iterations on social media. So some of you may be sick of this by now, or maybe you're just super into this ride uh, with me. Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this and to see the final iteration of this project. I promise you it's gonna be awesome. Until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.